gonna chomp in. In Australia, farmers grow a variety of crops, including cereals like wheat and barley, fruits such as apples and bananas, nut crops, cotton and grapes. Large-scale crop farming has been a part of Australian agriculture since the 19th century. Due to the country's vast landmass, introduced species like wheat, maize, and barley were some of the first commercial crops grown in Sydney after the first fleet arrived. Join us in this video as we discuss how Australian farmers produce billions of tons of fruit. Australia's citrus farming plays a big role in its agriculture. The country grows citrus fruits like oranges, lemons, limes, and mandarins. Important regions for growing citrus include Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, and South Australia. Australian citrus farms use modern techniques to produce top quality fruits. Export markets in Asia are crucial for Australia's citrus industry, helping it to make money and be known for its excellent citrus fruits worldwide. Australia grows different types of oranges, which adds to the variety of its citrus industry. Some common types of oranges grown in Australia will be discussed. Navels are a popular kind known for being sweet and seedless. Washington Navel and Newhall are two varieties that are commonly cultivated. Valencias are valued for their juiciness and are usually used to make juice. They are typically harvested later in the season. Blood oranges, including varieties like Moro and Taraco, are part of the unique blood orange group, known for their red color and rich taste. Seville oranges, these oranges are often used for making marmalade. Orange orchards grow in soils that drain well and have a slightly acidic to neutral pH. Testing the soil is important to check the levels of nutrients. Farmers often add organic materials like compost or well-rotted manure to improve the soil for growing. Mulching is used to keep moisture in and stop weeds from growing. Regularly giving orange orchards the right amount of water is very important. Drip irrigation or micro sprinklers are commonly used to give water directly to the roots, which helps save water. Checking how much moisture is in the soil helps decide when to water so the trees get enough water to grow well and make fruit. Using different ways to control pests is common, like using natural enemies of pests, good farming practices, and safe chemicals. Sprays made from soap, oil, or organic things are used carefully. Checking for pests and diseases early helps stop them from spreading. Oranges are usually picked when they're the right size and color. Picking them carefully helps keep them safe. Big orchards might use machines to pick fruit faster. All these things help keep orange orchards healthy and make sure they make good fruit for a long time. The growth stages of oranges from flowering to fruit development and the factors that influence yield and quality. The first stage is the flowering stage. During the spring, orange trees produce sweet-smelling white flowers with the help of sunlight and pollination by bees. The next stage is the fruit set. After fertilizing the flowers, they turn into small green fruits with the right pollination, weather, and nutrients. After that, there is fruit development. Over a few months, the green fruit grows bigger and starts to change color with proper irrigation and protection from pests. On to the color break as the next stage. As the fruit matures, oranges show their characteristic color due to sunlight, temperature, and nutrients. Maturation is the next growing stage. From late summer to winter, oranges reach full size and flavor with enough heat, sunlight, and water. However, there are factors to be considered while growing oranges. Some of these factors influence yield and quality and will be discussed. The first factor is climate. Oranges need specific temperatures for flowering, fruit set, and maturation. Frost can harm flowers and young fruit. Water management is another factor to be considered while growing oranges. Consistent and sufficient water is important for fruit development, as a lack of water can lead to smaller fruit and a lower yield. Mm -hmm. 
Also, soil health is another factor. Balanced soil nutrition and pH are crucial for healthy tree growth and fruit development. Pest and disease control involves using proactive pest control measures and managing fungal diseases like citrus canker, which are important for protecting the fruit. Next up are pruning and thinning. Pruning allows sunlight to reach the fruit, while thinning excess fruit helps produce larger, better quality oranges. To ensure fruit set, sufficient bees or other pollinators are needed. Variety selection also includes disease-resistant varieties that can improve yield and fruit quality. These questions should be considered after discussing the citrus industries in Australia and the varieties of oranges grown. How do Australian farmers grow and harvest apples as another type of fruit? What is the significance of apple production in Australia? Join us in the next chapter as we reveal how apple is being processed into various products. Apple production plays a major role in Australia's agricultural economy by creating jobs and supporting local and international markets. Apples are grown in different regions of Australia such as Tasmania, Victoria and New South Wales, ensuring a steady supply of apples throughout the year. With the growing trend toward healthy eating, apples have become a popular choice for snacking among consumers. The demand for fresh, locally grown produce aligns well with Australia's apple industry. Australia exports high quality apples to various countries, helping to build its reputation as a trusted source of premium fruit. The apple industry in Australia has adopted new technologies and innovative farming methods, contributing to the country's horticulture advancement. Popular apple varieties are as follows. Pink Lady Apples, loved for their sweet tart flavor and crispy texture, are one of the most popular types grown in Australia. Gala Apples, famous for their mild sweetness and crunchiness, are widely grown and enjoyed at home and abroad. Fuji apples from Japan have become a common choice in Australian orchards due to their sweet taste and firm texture. Really a sugar bomb, uh, that's what it is, but it's also got some nice crunch to it. Granny Smith apples originating in Australia are known for their bright green color and tangy flavor, making them popular for cooking and baking. Cripps Pink, also known as Sundowner, is similar to Pink Lady and is loved for its sweet and tangy taste. Jazz apples, a mix of Royal Gala and Braeburn varieties, are known for their sweet and juicy flavor. Kansi apples, a blend of Gala and Braeburn, are gaining popularity for their crispy texture and sweet tart taste. These different apple varieties meet the preferences of various consumers and play a vital role in the success of Australia's apple industry in both local and global markets. Cultivation practices for apple orchards begin with choosing the right location and ensuring soil needs are met, which are critical for the health of apple trees. Good drainage and air circulation are essential, and soil testing is beneficial for adjusting nutrient levels. Cultivation also requires consideration of sunlight exposure. Full sun is necessary for apples to thrive and bear fruit. In terms of planting, Tree spacing is vital to allow air and sunlight to reach all parts of the tree, while planting depth is crucial for establishing a strong root system. Additionally, thinning out extra fruit when they are small promotes the growth of larger, higher quality apples. Watering consistently, particularly during dry periods, is crucial for maintaining apple tree health. Drip irrigation is an efficient method as it delivers water directly to the roots. Regular soil testing is important for adding the right nutrients to support healthy tree growth. Pest control is another key aspect. Regular checks for pests allow for early problem identification and encouraging natural predators can help manage pest populations. Careful use of organic pesticides minimizes harm to beneficial insects when apples reach the right size, color, and firmness, they are ready to be harvested. Gentle handling during harvest and keeping apples cool afterward extend their freshness. Adjusting storage conditions like oxygen and carbon dioxide levels is essential for maintaining fruit quality. Following these cultivation practices helps apple orchards stay healthy and productive, ensuring a successful harvest of high quality fruit.
apple trees go through different stages throughout the year. In late fall and winter, apple trees go into dormancy. In early spring, the buds progress from the silver tip to the green tip as the temperatures increase and the days get longer. This signals the start of new growth for the trees. By mid to late spring, the buds continue to develop and the cluster becomes more defined. The appearance of pink buds shows that flower development is beginning. Warm temperatures and longer days influence this stage. During early summer, the fertilized flowers turn into small apples. Adequate pollination, warm temperatures, and good nutrition are all important for a successful fruit set. The apples grow in size and mature throughout the summer and early fall. Consistent warmth, sunlight, and enough water are needed for healthy fruit development. As late summer approaches, the apples reach maturity and their color changes depending on the variety. Temperature changes, sunlight exposure, and how the orchard is managed all influence when the apples are ready to be harvested. Various environmental factors can affect apple production. Chilling hours are important during the winter for proper bud development. Optimal temperatures during bloom are crucial for successful pollination. The presence of bees and other pollinators is necessary for effective pollination. Sunlight is needed for photosynthesis and influences the color change in ripening fruit. Consistent and sufficient irrigation is critical for overall tree health and fruit development. Certain weather conditions can lead to pests and diseases, so effective management practices are key. By understanding this seasonal cycle and the environmental factors, apple growers can make better decisions to improve their production and ensure a successful harvest. Also, the considerations for harvesting apples should be addressed. Harvesting is done when apples reach the desired size, color, and firmness, with careful handling to minimize bruising and damage. After harvesting, apples are often sorted and graded based on size, color, and quality. The choice of harvesting method depends on factors such as orchard size, tree structure, apple variety, and desired level of automation. With many modern apple orchards using a combination of hand picking and mechanical harvesting methods for efficiency and fruit quality. Having discussed apple production, these questions should be addressed. What are the varieties of grapes? What are the viticultural practices for grape vines? Stay tuned as we reveal all you need to know about grapes as a fruit. Australia has a variety of grape types used for table grapes and wine production. Sultana grapes are popular for their sweetness and seedless nature. Crimson seedless grapes are known for their firm texture, red color, and sweet taste, making them a top choice for eating fresh. Thompson seedless grapes are green, yellowish, seedless, and loved for their sweetness. Red Globe grapes are large, red, and juicy, commonly found as table grapes. Menindee seedless grapes have a crisp texture and sweet flavor, while Sun Muscat grapes have a unique muscat taste that sets them apart. Thompson seedless green grapes for me are one of my favorite. For wine production, Shiraz grapes are widely planted for their bold flavors. Chardonnay grapes are versatile and are used for both still and sparkling wines. Cabernet Sauvignon grapes are known for their deep color and strong structure. Sauvignon Blanc grapes have vibrant acidity and unique aromas, making them perfect for white wine. Merlot grapes have softer tannins and a friendly character and are often used in red wine blends. Riesling grapes, grown in cooler regions, produce aromatic and crisp white wines with varying levels of sweetness. Pinot Noir grapes are delicate and produce elegant and complex wines. Semillon grapes are used for both dry and sweet white wines, including the famous Hunter Valley Semillon in Australia. Australia's diverse climate and terroir allow for a wide range of grape varieties, adding richness and complexity to the country's table grapes and wines. However, grape growing techniques encompass training vine shoots to grow in a single line, especially for varieties like Cabernet Sauvignon. Winter pruning controls growth, regulates grape production, and shapes the canopy. Shoot thinning removes excess shoots, helping the vine focus its energy on the remaining ones. Leaf pulling or removing some leaves increases air and sunlight exposure to the grapes.
Efficient water use is achieved by delivering it directly to the roots. Selecting one or two canes for fruit bearing in the next growing season is a key pruning method. Spur pruning retains some of the previous year's growth to encourage more fruit production. Integrated Pest Management IPM, uses a mix of biological, cultural, and chemical controls for managing pests and diseases, with fungicides and insecticides applied as needed. Grapes are hand-picked by skilled workers for high quality, while machines with gentle shaking mechanisms are used for efficient harvesting in larger vineyards. Removing extra grape clusters and berries from each cluster improves even ripening and concentrates the flavor. Ensuring vine shoots receive enough sunlight is crucial for photosynthesis and grape ripening. Managing the leaf canopy to optimize sunlight exposure is also important. Vines are cut back and prepared for the dormant season, with cuts covered to prevent disease. Following these techniques ensures vine health, controls grape yield, and secures high-quality grapes for eating or winemaking. In the process of making wine through grapes, grapes are picked first, and then they are crushed to break the skins and release juice. Pressing is done to extract more juice. For white wines, the juice and solids are separated right away. In the case of red wines, the skins are kept in contact with the juice to get the color out. Yeast is added to ferment the grapes and turn sugars into alcohol. The temperature during fermentation affects the taste and smell of the wine. Red wine is fermented with the skins to get tannin and color. Wine can be aged in oak barrels for more flavor. Stainless steel tanks are used to keep white wines fresh. Complexity and texture are added to wine by allowing it to sit on lees or used yeast. To clarify, the wine is moved off sediment. Filtering removes particles for a clear and stable wine. Now, talking about mixing different batches, winemakers mix different batches to get the flavor they want. Australia has many different wine regions with unique climates and soils. Regions like Barossa Valley, Margaret River, and Hunter Valley make special wines. Australian winemakers are good at making wines like Shiraz, Cabernet Sauvignon, Chardonnay, and Sauvignon Blanc. As regards selling in other countries, Australia sells a lot of wine to places like the UK, the US, and China. Different wine styles are made to suit different people's tastes. Visitors can go to Australian wine regions to see the wineries and taste the wine. The industry is successful because of the different soils, quality winemaking, new ideas, and care for the environment. After revealing grape processing, these questions should be asked. What are the varieties of bananas grown in Australia? What are the growth stages of banana plants? Come with us in the next chapter as we discuss how bananas are grown and harvested in Australia. Australia has a booming banana industry, mainly in tropical areas like Queensland and northern New South Wales. Bananas are popular in Australia, and the industry plays a big role in local consumption and exports. Regarding distribution, Queensland is the main banana producing state in Australia, providing a large portion of the country's bananas. New South Wales, especially in the north, also grows bananas although not as much as Queensland. Bananas thrive in warm and humid climates with well-drained soil, making coastal regions of Queensland like Tully and Innisfail perfect for cultivation. The major banana varieties in Queensland are Cavendish, Ladyfinger, Goldfinger, and Ducasse. In New South Wales, Ladyfinger, Cavendish, and Blue Java are commonly grown. Bananas grow best in warm, tropical climates with plenty of sunlight, high humidity, and well-drained, fertile soil rich in organic matter. When planting bananas, it's important to use suckers from the parent plant and space them out properly for good air circulation and sunlight exposure. Make sure to plant the suckers deep enough to cover the base. Bananas are usually picked when they are mature, but still green. Harvesting involves cutting the whole bunch from the plant. Inspect the harvested bunch for any visible damage, diseases, or pests. Only healthy bunches move on to post-harvest handling. In some cases, bananas are packed in the field. 
the bunches are carefully placed in crates or containers to avoid bruising. Handle bananas with care during transportation to prevent bruising and damage. Proper packaging, temperature control, and gentle handling are important. During transportation, ensure enough ventilation to avoid heat and moisture buildup, which could cause premature ripening. Bananas naturally release ethylene, a ripening hormone. Exposing bananas to ethylene speeds up the ripening process. Bananas can be separated from other fruits in ethylene-resistant rooms or specialized ripening chambers to control the ripening rate. Ripening chambers with controlled conditions help regulate temperature, humidity, and ethylene levels for precise ripening control. Bananas typically take three to seven days to ripen, depending on the desired ripeness and temperature conditions. Regularly check the ripening process for color changes, aroma development, and fruit softening. Remove overripe bananas promptly to prevent them from affecting others. Once bananas are ripe, they are packaged in plastic bags, cardboard boxes, or other consumer-friendly options for retail distribution. Bananas can be stored in cold storage to prolong their shelf life. However, storing them below a certain temperature can affect their taste and texture. Proper post-harvest handling and ripening practices are crucial to ensure bananas reach consumers in good condition, ripe and ready to eat. These practices help reduce waste and provide high-quality bananas to the market. Having discussed bananas growing and harvesting processes, we should contemplate these questions. What are the stages of fruit development? What are the factors influencing fruit flavor, color, and texture? Don't miss out on our next exploration as we step into how stone fruits have been processed. Australia significantly produces various stone fruits like peaches, nectarines, plums, apricots, and cherries. The country's diverse climate allows for the growth of these fruits in different regions. Let's take a closer look. Different varieties include Golden Queen, Queen Giant, and Tatura Blood. Some of the major production areas are Victoria, New South Wales, and South Australia. Under the plums category, we have President Angelino, Satsuma, and Mariposa. Cultivation practices for stone fruit orchards, including pruning and thinning, would be discussed as follows. Choose soil that drains well, is fertile, and gets enough sunlight. Think about things like the risk of frost, how high the area is, and how close it is to water. Plant trees in late winter or early spring when the soil is ready. Trim trees during the time when they aren't growing to get rid of branches that are dead, sick, or crossing each other. Cut back on extra growth to keep the tree open and let air flow through. Trimming shapes the tree, lets in more light, and makes the fruit better. Taking away some fruit clusters makes the fruits left grow bigger and better. Do this when the fruits are still small and leave space between them. Use fertilizers in early spring and after harvest to give the soil what it needs. Check the orchard often for bugs and sickness. Pick the fruit when it's just right for what you want to do with it. Keep the fruit in a cool, breezy place to keep it fresh longer. If you do all these things, people who grow stone fruit will have healthy trees, good fruit, and a better orchard. The fruit development process from bloom to harvest can slightly differ depending on the type of fruit. However, here's a basic overview of the typical stages. First, the bloom stage begins when the flowers on the fruit tree open and are ready for pollination. After successful pollination and fertilization, the flowers turn into young fruits. These fruits then go through various stages where they change in size, color, and texture. Depending on the fruit, the color change may happen slowly or quickly as the fruit matures. The final stage is ripening, which involves changes in flavor, texture, and aroma. Harvesting takes place when the fruits are fully mature and ready to be picked. It's important to remember that the length of each stage and the overall fruit development process can vary due to factors like the environment, type of fruit, and farming methods. 
Many elements play a role in determining the taste, appearance, and feel of fruits. It is important for fruit growers, food producers, and consumers to understand these factors. Here are the main ones. Different types of fruits have their own unique qualities when it comes to taste, appearance, and feel. The level of ripeness when fruits are picked has a big impact on their taste, appearance, and feel. Fruits that are fully ripe are usually sweeter, softer, and more flavorful than those that are not ripe yet. Picking fruits at the right level of ripeness is key to getting the best taste, appearance, and feel. The conditions of temperature, humidity, and atmosphere during storage can also have an effect on the taste, appearance, and feel of fruits. When harvesting stone fruits, skilled workers pick fruits from trees by hand. This method is good for delicate fruits and allows selective picking based on ripeness, but it requires more labor, is slower, and may cost more. Machines with shaking mechanisms remove fruits from trees. It's faster and more efficient for big orchards and reduces labor costs. Care must be taken to avoid damaging fruit and trees. Machines with conveyors gently move fruits from trees to bins, reduces fruit drop and damage during harvesting. Harvesters with vision systems pick ripe fruits while leaving unripe ones. Optimizes efficiency and ensures fruits are ripe. Shears and clippers are examples of tools for picking specific fruits. Advantages. Precise harvesting is good for certain varieties or small orchards. Regardless of the method, minimizing bruising and damage is important. Gentle handling maintains fruit quality, appealing to consumers. The choice of harvesting method depends on orchard size, tree structure, fruit type, and desired automation level. Many orchards use a mix of methods for efficiency and quality. This careful consideration in every step from cultivation to harvest ensures that consumers enjoy the best of Australia's stone fruits, a testament to the country's commitment to agricultural excellence and sustainability.